Matthew with uh, Kentucky Artifacts and Outdoor Adventures. I am on a brand new creek, one that I have permission uh, to hunt. And I've got, I think, a rough tool on the ground here. We'll flip the camera around and take a look at it together. Now, this isn't anything too spectacular, but it's definitely a blade, work blade. Mm, you can see the uh, you can see the napping along this leading edge. It's made off of a big flake. This is just a quick use cast off tool. I'm gonna keep looking. Well, I've moved on to a, another permission of mine and uh, just walking the creek here. There's about 500 acres of fields here and uh, a pretty good creek system that goes through it. Lots of material. You can see it all here. And I've got something on the ground. I just stepped away from it, and now I don't see it. Hmm, am I gonna have to turn the camera off and go look again? Let me step back a bit and kind of move forward here. Hmm, where'd it go? Oh, there it is, I see it. You know, there's so much material in this creek. It's 90% flint, but right there, I believe, I believe that's a worked piece. Oh yeah, definitely a worked piece. Yeah, a rough, a rough scraper, maybe an end scraper. Some people refer to that sort of thing as a humpback scraper, but I usually think of a humpback scraper as being made off of a flake where this has got fracture on both sides. That's yeah, something. Hopefully I'll find some uh, legitimate points along this walk. Here, I'd, it doesn't look like much here as I come down on it, but I know that it is because I've already flipped it over. This is a, it's a rough blade. Very rough. All right, keep going. Hey, it's Matthew with uh, Kentucky Artifacts and Outdoor Adventures and uh, shaved my beard off. It's uh, getting to be spring, so getting ready for it. I am on a, a creek today and uh, just walked maybe 20 minutes now. I got something on the ground here. I'm gonna flip it over and check it out. Let's see what it is. All right, what you're looking at is right in the middle of the screen, that really light color. Let's go ahead and come down on that. This is not a point, but this is most definitely a worked piece, a tool of some variety, big blade, scraper, a preform or a quarry blank. But uh, let's take a look at this. Not sure how big it is. I think I see the perimeter of it. Oh yeah. Wow, that is really just a gigantic blade. Here, just let me wash that off. Man, that is nicely formed. You can see the uh, the heavy napping, the spalling off the edges all the way around. Big old blade, my goodness. Let me dry that off a little bit, see if we can see the, see the, uh, the work on it a little better. A little creek stain. Whoop, oh crap. I mean, darn. Hope I didn't chip that anywhere. Can you see? See the work on that? Man, that's super cool. It's huge. All right, I'm gonna keep looking. That's exciting. New find, prospect on this creek. Hey, it's Matthew with Kentucky Artifacts and Outdoor Adventures here with my nephew on a creek, as you see. I think I've got something on the ground. We're gonna turn around and check it out. All right, right in the middle of the screen. I'm not 100% sure this is anything yet, but it's definitely got evidence of work on it. There's so much flint in this creek. You gotta look at everything. All right, we're gonna, oh, it doesn't go deep. It's definitely a little scraper, really rough, really rough. Look at the back side of it. Oh yeah, we'll rinse that guy off. That is absolutely just a rough, rough tool. Man, I can't remember the last time I found an, 
a point. It's been so long. I find tools all the time. And this is definitely just a little rough worked tool. All right, I'll get back with you if I find anything else. Kentucky Artifacts and Outdoor Adventures. I am, uh, I'm in Florida uh, where my father and I yesterday uh, did a little dig on some private land uh, where we have permission. And I wanted to do a little educational blip here about uh, finding debitage and how identifying debitage can help you find uh, uh, Native American artifacts and points. So on this uh, handy dandy uh, paper towel are a bunch of little bits of material that we, we dug yesterday. They're just tiny little bits, but these are all examples of what's called debitage. Debitage is just a technical word that means debris and it's the little bits and chips that remain uh, from working off of a point and, uh, and uh, making it into uh, an actual usable tool. And uh, I want to show you how to identify debitage. So there's some really good examples here. I'll start with this one. On one side of this flake, you can see the many facets that were created by napping. So whether that was pressure flaking or if that was uh, impact that caused the, the flaking to occur. And on one side of this flake, there are several facets you can see there. This would have been on the outside of a stone where other bits and pieces were chipped off of it. On one side, this is called a platform. It was probably the area where it was struck to knock this piece off of the larger piece of material. And then on the back side, you can see it's just pretty much a smooth single flake. There's some other really good examples of that here. I'll show you this one. Uh, same thing. This one has uh, just different facets uh, from the process of of uh, napping and then on the back side it's just a smooth surface a smooth flake this one also has a platform this one has a really great example of what's referred to as the bulb of percussion and the bulb of percussion on um, stones that break in what's called conchoidal fracturing conchoidal fracturing is sort of the way glass breaks where it'll have uh, create sharp edges and a curvature of the of the glass this also has a platform on it. And then the bulb of percussion, let's see if you can see it here, is that thick portion. And it's just sort of a little bulb that remains right here from the napping process. And I wanna show you on a, uh, this is a broken base that we found yesterday. It's uh, the type of base, it's called a, uh, let me see if I can remember this. It's a Thanatosasa base. I found that on projectilepoints.net. But I want to show you, let's see if I can do this with one hand. This is the base. This is an ancient break. You can imagine that this, uh, this base is a part of a tool that continued out that direction. But I want to show you how, let me see if I can do this one-handed. I'm going to, I guess I'll use my leg. I want to show you how this piece, that's the platform, that's the work surface. This is the smooth flake. How this articulated with the original piece of stone. Now, I don't know. It's the same kind of material, but I don't know that this flake came off of this actual tool. But you can see then how that piece lines up. Again, it's not the actual flake off the actual stone, but you can see how the flake is the portion that came off of a stone like this. Let me see if I can get the light a little better. That bulb of percussion creates the depression that remains on the stone that's actually being worked. So I'm gonna just sort of drop this. Oop, I dropped the wrong piece. I wanted to drop that one. But, so you can see how this then is the negative space of that flake. This is the smooth surface that remains. It is adjacent to the smooth surface that's created on the debitage or the waste flakes from the napping process. So the benefit to being able to identify debitage, looking for a work surface on one side, a smooth flake surface on the other, and that bulb of percussion, is it lets you know if you're just finding stones or if you're potentially in a good area for hunting. So I hope that's helpful to you. It's helpful to me in identifying if I'm in a good place or not. Good luck.